At the moment, the process of creating enemies is done manually. If we go down here to remind ourselves, I create an instance of the enemy class and then add it into the group. What I'd like to do is automate this so that each wave of enemies is generated by itself. First, I want to add different enemy types. If I go into the assets and images and an enemies folder, you can see I've actually got four different enemies. I need to load all these images in. We go up to the top where I'm currently loading in the enemy images and I will create a new variable. This is going to be a dictionary. It's going to be enemy images and that will be equal to a dictionary. The enemies will be sorted by their strength. So the first enemy is weak and then the value for that is going to be the associated image. Well, actually the first one that we loaded in earlier, that is the one that we're going to use. So I pass that in there and I can remove it from down here. Then I can a comma, copy this line down three more times. And then on the last one, make sure you delete the comma at the very end to close out the dictionary. Now I can change the names of these other enemies. The second one is medium, third one is strong, and then the last one is elite. And then we update these numbers to correspond. So it'll be number two, number three, and number four. I can now pass these into my enemy class when I create them. If we go down here, we create an enemy instance here. The first thing I want to do is add an additional argument. This one is going to be enemy underscore type. Then I need to update the last argument because it's no longer an individual image, it's a dictionary of the images. And for the first enemy, I'm just going to define the enemy type. I will say enemy type is equal to weak. Then we go into the enemy class and we update it to match. The first thing is to add an enemy type argument here and then to change the last argument to images. I also want to add a health variable to these enemies. So I'll say that self.health is equal to 10. Later on, we'll change the health and speed to match the type of enemy, but for now, we'll just manually enter them. Then the next thing I need to do is update this original image. It used to be assigned to the image argument, but now we get a dictionary. So we actually need to extract the particular image based on the enemy type. What I can do here is say images, which is a dictionary, dot get, which will get the value. And inside here, I need to pass the key. The key is the enemy type. If we now go back and test this out, we should end up with the same enemy as before. So visually, nothing has changed, but we now know that it's working in this different way. So what I can do here is change this one to, let's say, strong, run it again. And now I have a different enemy coming through. So this makes it a lot easier to control what type of enemies we're getting. I'll put this back to weak for now. At this point, I can introduce the enemy data.py file. So similar to the turret data, this is a file that's going to contain a list of all the information on the enemies. So we're going to store this file in the same location as all the other Python files we have so far. The difference with this one is that it actually has two lists. The first one is the enemy spawn data. We'll come back to this later on when we actually come to use it. But the second list that we need is further down. It's the enemy data. And this tells us, you'll notice here, the keys are the same. So for a weak enemy type, we have health and speed. Medium, we have health and speed. And the same for strong and elite. I'll just update this to match up the indentation. So what we can now do is use this enemy data dictionary to enter health and speed variables into our enemy class. We don't have to manually enter these anymore in here. So let's load that in. To import it here, we need to import from the enemy data file this enemy data list. We'll just do this right at the top. We'll say from enemy underscore data, which is the name of the file, import enemy underscore data, all caps, because that's the name of our variable. Now we can go down here and take this health variable from that enemy data. We'll say enemy underscore data dot get, which will get the value based on this key, which is enemy type. And let's say the enemy type we've passed in is weak. That's going to go down here. And that itself is another dictionary. Inside it, we've got health and speed. We can access these individually by adding in square brackets at the end here and putting in the name of that key, which is health. And I can repeat this for the speed and just change this variable out to, to match it. If we go in and test this again, we have the same enemy from before. But let's say I change it to the elite enemy. Run this again, and now you can see he's a lot faster because the elite enemy, if we go back here, has a much greater speed variable. So we'll change this guy back to weak again. And the next step 
is to actually remove all of this manual work. We want the enemies to be generated automatically, so each wave to be generated by itself. This is going to be done inside our world class. This is what's going to control the spawning and the processing of enemies. I'll begin by creating a variable at the top, which is going to be self.level, and I'll begin at level 1. Then down here, I will create a couple more variables. So self.enemy underscore list is going to be an empty list. And underneath that, self.spawned enemies will be equal to zero. Now we're able to use this enemy spawn data at the top. So this enemy spawn data list contains a bunch of dictionaries and each of the dictionaries corresponds to the level. I've just used comments to make it easier to identify which level I'm looking at. But this tells us how many enemies of each type we're going to spawn at that level. I want to load this variable into my world class. Right at the top, we will say from enemy underscore data, import enemy spawn data. Now I need to extract that data. So in here I have a dictionary and it tells me how many enemies of each type I need to create. Well, within the world, I want to populate this enemy list with all those enemies. I'm going to create a specific method for that. So we'll come down here and we'll say def process underscore enemies. And this only takes one argument, which is self. First, we want to extract the relevant dictionary from this enemy spawn data list based on the level that we're on. So right now, if we're on level one, then we want index zero. It's going to give us this dictionary here. I'm going to store it in a temporary variable called enemies. And I'll take it from the enemy spawn data at index self.level minus one. Because if the self.level variable is one, we need index zero. So we always need to reduce it by one. Next, I'm going to iterate through that dictionary for enemy underscore type in enemies. And that's going to iterate through each of these types. So we'll go through weak, then medium, strong, and elite. Now we already know that there's 15 and then none of the others, but we need the code to allow for all of them. Then I will say enemies to spawn is equal to enemies, which is that dictionary that I've just taken out, at index enemy type. Let's print out this variable and build this up step by step. We'll say enemies to spawn. And then we need to call this method. So I go into my main.py file and just after I process data, I'll say world.process underscore enemies. Test this out. And now down here, I get a little printout. And you'll see it says 15, then 0, 0, 0, which corresponds to what we've got here. So that list works out the quantity of each enemy type that we need to create. Now we can create a for loop down here. I'll say for enemy in range. And for the range, we can use that number that we just extracted, which is going to be enemies to spawn. That means that if we look at this list that we produced earlier, we're going to iterate 15 times for the first enemy, then 0, 0, 0 for the enemies after. And here, let's add another print statement. We'll say print enemy type. Go back here again. And instead of those numbers, I should now get the exact enemies that I'm creating. So if I counted these up, this would be 15 weak enemies. Let's go back and just temporarily tweak this. So we'll remove this 15. We'll say there's one weak, two medium, one strong, and two elites. We'll run this again. And now we get exact same thing to match. One weak, two medium, one strong, and two elites. So let's set this back and continue with that automation. What we want to do here, instead of printing out each of those enemies, is we want to store them inside the list. We'll say enemy underscore list dot append enemy type. At the end of this for loop, what I'm going to end up with is a list that contains every single enemy that we want to create. The only issue here is because we're going in order from weak, medium, strong, and elite, it means that they're always going to be generated in that order as well. So they're always going to come out weak first, then the medium, and so on until the strongest guys. But I kind of want to add a little bit of randomness to this so that we get this list, we know how many enemies of each type we need to create, and then we shuffle them all up so that the order is random. Well, that can be done with the random module. We'll come up here and make sure we import random. And we go back into this process enemy section. And just after the for loop, or rather after the first for loop, so once this entire enemy generation is complete and we have our enemy list, we'll add a comment to say, now randomize the list to shuffle the enemies. 
And this is just done by saying random.shuffle, which is used to shuffle up a list, self.enemy list. Now that we've got this list created, we can always access it from our main file by saying world.enemy list. What I'd like to do next is use this list to periodically produce enemies. So rather than me manually creating the enemy instances, they're going to be created by the world. Well, for that, I need to create an additional constant variable here. And I'm just going to add a comment to separate it out. It's going to be the enemy constant. This is going to be called spawn cooldown. I don't want all the enemies to come rushing out at once, so I want a little gap in between them. And you can actually play around with this number to adjust the balance of the game. Now we go back into the main file, and right at the top, I'll need to create another variable. I will call this last underscore enemy underscore spawn, and this is going to be the current timestamp. So as soon as we begin the game, we take a current timestamp, and from there we begin the timer to see when we can start producing these enemies. Now we can go down to where we manually create our enemies, which is this section here. No, this section here. And we'll cut this out because we do need to reuse the code, but we're going to move it somewhere else. And we move it down into our main loop. Now I'm actually going to have to put this into the drawing section. I try to keep the updating and the drawing sections separate as much as I can, but with some of the code, it's difficult to force it into these categories. So down here, after we draw our groups, I will add a comment to say spawn enemies. And this spawn is going to be based on that timer. So I need to check if enough time has passed since we last spawned an enemy or since the game started. If pg time.getTicks, which is the current time, minus the time when the last enemy was spawned, is greater than c.spawn underscore cooldown, which we've just created in our constants file, then we can create the next enemy. So I'm going to paste that code in from above back into here. We'll just update the indentation. And once the enemy has been spawned, I need to say last enemy spawn is equal to pg.time.getTicks. So basically I update the timer and now we have to wait until it's passed again before we produce the next enemy. There is a slight issue here though, which is that I'm still manually defining the enemy type as weak. I need this to be automated as well. This information is stored inside this self.enemy list variable in our world class. So the enemy list, if you remember, just looks like this. If we iterate through it, it will say weak, medium, medium, strong, and so on. So the enemy type is now going to be taken from that variable. We'll say world.enemy underscore list, but we need to know the index. So we need to know which of these enemies it is we're taking. Well, we're going to be working through this list one by one and the variable that we're using to track how many enemies have spawned is also in here. It's this one, spawned enemies. I can call that variable in here and use it as the index. Then at the end, once an enemy has been created, I go enemies plus one. This will ensure that we work through that list and we create each of the enemy types from it. Now, I'll just get rid of this space here. If I run this code now, I will get an error from it. Not straight away, but it will come eventually. So before I do that and explain why the error is there, I just want you to pause the video and take a second to think about what could still be missing from this. If you don't want a hint, then pause now. But if you do want a hint, then think about what will happen with this enemy list here. Consider the fact that this variable is going to keep increasing by one every time we generate another enemy. Now let's run it and see what happens. So we start producing the enemies one by one, and eventually all 15 of them are gonna come out. And now we get an error. And the error says list index out of range. Because we've created all of the enemies that were available inside that list, then we increase the counter by one more, and we try to access the next enemy, which doesn't exist. So I need to wrap this inside another if statement. We'll say if world.spawned enemies is less than the length of world.enemy list. So as long as we still have enemies left to spawn, then we continue running this code. But once we get to the end, we're going to stop, and that's the end of all our spawned enemies. And we can test this out pretty quickly. If I just change this down to, say, 5, run it again, and now we should be able to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 enemies, and that's it. So that's our entire wave. Let's go back, change that to 15, and that's the process of enemy generation now automated.